Hi, I'm Regina Wolf. I'm a ceramics instructor over at Spruill Center for the Arts. And today I'm going to demonstrate throwing a bowl and then trimming it. And I will draw a design inside it once it's set up enough and carve the outline of the design. And then I will paint under glazes into the design and blend the colors on the piece. And um, that's what I'll be demonstrating. It'll take a couple of days to do the, all of this demoing. And um, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. So this is my three pounds of clay and I'm going to make a bowl and this is not really a teaching video as much as just a little demo video. I'll have another bowl that I will demo trimming on in another section of the video and then I will decorate the bowl and on this particular case with this bowl I'm going to be using underglazes to paint some fantasy patterns on and now I'm just centering and since I wedged this clay myself Chances are, it will have a few air bubbles in it. So this is a white stoneware clay that I'm using. Because this is a bowl, I wanted to aim the camera so you could really see the bowl shape way that I'm opening up the, the inside. I want to keep this inside nice and round and not give it a flat bottom like on something else. This is three pounds of clay. And on 
this bowl, the bottom, once it firms up and gets pretty stiff, I'll be turning it over and trimming the bottom. So this is the actual bottom of the bowl, right about there. making bowls I really like to use a rib on the inside and the outside it gives it a lot of strength and this is just some of the shaping a couple of throwing lines on the inside of the bowl that I actually want to erase because of the decoration that I have in mind for this bowl. Normally I like showing and throwing lines because it helps the glaze make some really interesting patterns but in this particular case I want to try to erase those lines. a little slip on the inside, a little water to sponge out. So when everything goes right, it makes this look incredibly easy. And it is when everything goes right. But it's many years of experience of throwing these forms that teach me what I can do to make the shape work the way I want it to and not collapse on me. It's really fun <laughs> when everything works perfectly. I'm going to widen this bowl a little bit more to give it a little more volume. And because the decoration I'm intending to put in it, I need it to be wider so I can get my hand in there.
you can see I'm just lightly refining the inside curve. You can see the outside curve. It has a relatively narrow base, which is something I usually tell my students not to do because it can collapse. So I, would, I need to trim all that off anyway under the base. But I think I can get away with it on this one. And then I'm just going to add a little embellishment right in here. Which I like to add at the bottom on most of my bowls. It kind of hides any irregularity. Plus, I really like the way the glaze sits in it. And I dropped a piece of hard clay in there. Hmm. Must have come off something. Okay. Okay, that's the bowl. I have a bowl that is similar to the one that I threw in the earlier sec segment of the video. And it's set up pretty well. I have not trimmed it. It's still attached to the bat that I threw it on, which is good for me because I didn't cut it off. It means I can turn it sideways while I'm dealing with it. Um, I decided that if I let it get hard enough for the trimming of the foot then it would be possibly too hard to trim on the inside it's a decision that i might change my mind on some other day but for now this is what i'm going to go with so these are some samples of some pieces that i have done in this technique this is one that has just gone through a couple of bisque fires and has not got, gotten its glaze on it yet. And I just very recently got into drawing on the clay actual patterns with colors and making them very specific patterns instead of usually relying on the glaze. I start with a pencil. When I draw lightly with a pencil, if I don't like what I've drawn on the pencil, then I just take a slightly damp sponge and I erase it. So in this sense, it's very easy for me um, because I don't have to be freaked out about making mistakes, you know. Now these are pretty close to the edge, so sometimes I'll have to redo that area. I don't usually like to have the colors going right to the edge. So. That's where my handy uh, sponge eraser comes in. I'm drawing it lightly so that it doesn't leave big marks in it. And if I make a lot of extra lines in it, then I will just have to smooth them out. So sometimes the bowl will throw nice and quickly but this could take, I would not let you make you sit through how long it takes to draw these. Um, I rework them many times until I feel that they're something that I feel comfortable with. Um, I never know exactly what they're going to look like. I just have a basic idea. I, I've done a little bit more of the carving, I mean of the drawing. So I think you can sort of see it. And I'm ready to carve it. I have one of these tiny little Sgraffito tools here. You can kind of see the loop right there. And I like that a lot for carving because it gives me a v-shaped carving line and a v-shaped carving line will hold any of the underglaze outline that I really prefer to use as I put the black in sometimes I put the black as the outline in like on this one oops on this one the black was put in first and bisque fired, and then I added the color. But on many of the other ones I'm doing now, I'm 
I end up adding, putting in all the color first, and, excuse me, I couldn't talk while I was carving. How do you like that? Um, and then I end up putting the black over all the colors after the bisque fire, which is a little bit scary at first. But you wipe it back and it kind of tones down the, the underglaze colors very slightly. And it seems to work really well. So one of the advantages of carving it this way um, is that before I start painting the underglazes on, I'll be able to take a damp sponge and wipe off any lines that are, you know, in the way from when I use the pencil. There. The next spot that I have to get is part of that flower up there because this is much drier than down here. Down here is still a little tacky and it's not a good idea to carve it, but up here is really close to dry. Okay, so here is the finished carving part. Um, and that's going to be my overall design. I think you can see down here the clay was so wet that um, my carving kind of really got smushy. So I kind of just took my finger and kind of blended it in. And by tomorrow it'll be a lot drier and I can recarve that area. But I think this is a fun design. And it'll be fun painting it too. But before I paint it, I definitely have to take this off the bat and trim the bottom. It's still really tacky. So I'm going to take my wire and wire it off the bat and leave it sitting on the bat overnight. Okay, so the bowl has been carved. It's dry. It's actually changing color a little bit at the rim. And this is the bottom that has to be trimmed off. I'm going to trim it on this foam bat. First thing I'm going to do is Kind of feel the thickness between the inside of the bowl and what's the bottom. I'm going to test it another way. I use these measuring sticks. So what I do is I place one stick across the top and hold another one in the middle and make kind of a T-shape. And then I move it to the outside and this tells me this space right here is the thickness of my bottom that I can trim, but I can only trim half of that. The foot will rest on where the floor of the bowl starts, which is right about here. And obviously I have a lot more clay on the other side, so I'm going to make a caliper measurement on the inside at about that location. And see, this, is, this shows me about how wide the outside of the foot will be. And I'll just keep that caliper over there and turn my bowl upside down. And now I have to center it. And this takes a little bit of practice. See how off it is right now? I can't trim it when it's in that state. So I have to center it so that when I'm trimming it, I'm actually trimming a round circle into it. So it's almost centered. That seems pretty good. Okay, so I don't have to use clay to fasten this on because of the foam. Um, if I put my calipers up, that's about how much I have to trim off, which is in about an inch. And I'm going to not make the wheel go too, too fast. This clay is really pretty dry, so I'm, I'm going to hold on to it and... Um, just start trimming. So I have to take off all the excess clay. I'm not in a rush on this. It's going to take, you know, takes practice and I never rush the process. This clay is actually trimming very nicely. It's coming off in really pretty ribbons of clay. 
nothing is sticking to the bowl. All the ribbons are nice and loose. And every once in a while I can look and see how much I've trimmed off. Not all bowls have a foot on them, but even the bowls I make that do not have a foot, I turn them upside down on the wheel and I trim because a bowl needs to have that rounded shape on the outside mimic the inside. So you need to, it needs to feel graceful. It's still a little bit wide. I'm going to take a little bit more off. I also, with this shape bowl, I like my foot to be curved, kind of like a donut shape. I always round off this the outer edge anyway, instead of making them severely straight. I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller tool. But I tend to like these little pillowy. I feel like it's it's a just a design for my foot that I like on this shape bowl. I always hold all my tools with two hands whenever possible. And you can see I have a hand resting on the bowl itself while I'm trimming. I never hold the tool back here. There's no control over it. So this is the part, marking off the middle and carving out the middle that I think most people are the most nervous about, that and cutting down into here. I want the clay in this bottom area over here to be about the same thickness as the wall of the pot. I don't want it to be super thick or very thin. I can switch to a wider tool once I trim down a little bit. Always careful to know where this end is and this end, and I hold it at an angle so that the only part of the tool that's really touching the clay is on the right half of the clay so that the clay is spinning into the turning tool. So that's why my hand on this side is actually lifting up the tool a little bit. There's a couple of little bumps right here. I'm going to use a wider tool. Right here, there's a little bit of extra. That's feeling better. Okay. That looks pretty good. So the next step is to get out all my underglazes and start painting the inside. Okay, I have um, the setup here to start my underglazing. And I have a lot of underglazes. I just have collected over the years tons of different underglazes. And I have a lot of different brushes that I like to use. And... I use all different brands of underglazes. Um, I'm not particular. Um, I go by the color and what I like the feel of and how it fires on the clay that I'm using. I also tend to mix up my underglazes on a plastic plate. When I start painting, I know what each color paints like. So I'm just going to do a little bit and the this particular yellow that I'm using I need to give it several coats so I'm going to paint some of it and then start blending so the inside of this flower the middle is going to be yellow one of the things because I don't have any outline any black outline I am actually allowing my colors to go down into the cut um, carved area into the line that will eventually be covered with black. And the weather outside affects how the underglazes go on these pieces. 
which is something that most of us don't think about. But it happens to be a, a cool, rainy day today, so everything will take longer to dry. If it... So I'm going to start mixing a little bit of orange in with my yellows. So I'm going to put that on my plate and then start adding a little bit of yellow into it so that I can get some of that coloration. You can see the, the color change in there. And then I'm going to get a little bit of red also. Okay, so this is just about finished, and if I find an area after the bisque layer that has some underglaze where I don't want it, then I can just lightly sand it off. If I went past the lines, I can just lightly sand it off after the bisque fire. And now I'm just going to add the final bit onto it, which sometimes I will do after the bisque fire and then re-bisque it again, but this time I'm going to do it now. I'm just going to add some dots onto this. So that's what those flower dots look like. And this will go into the bisque fire. And after the bisque fire, I may choose to, I probably will, add some different colors on top of the dragonfly. Um, I don't know that I'll add more colors to the flower. Um, they seem about where I want them to be. I like this one a little bit better than this one. But um, I think it'll be okay. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you'll try to do one of these sometime soon. Okay.